Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Graham. And thank you to Arup for hosting us today. So about a year ago, I did a similar presentation at the UCL, where I studied computer science. And the subtitle of the presentation was basically explaining how I spent seven years of my life and one and a half million pounds of someone else's money. So this year is eight years, and you get the point. So when I started as a student in the past, um, I was sponsored by Arup. And the initial brief, they were using this uh, data set, King's Cross Station, which was already finished in 2007, but it was a good a use case. And I started in 2010. And the initial brief from Alvisa from Foresight was, we have massive 3D models, and we would like to put them online. And I was like, yeah, yeah sure, no problem. We can, we can surely do it. So when I started back then, putting 3D models on the browser was pretty much unheard of. This was my very first initial prototype, about 2011, uh, reading data using Java applets uh, directly into JavaScript and from Mongo database. So instead of having any server, you would just connect directly to the database, read all the data, recompose it, and put it in the browser. So this is the Northern Hotel from King's Cross. Now, what I would say my, my claim to fame was in 2012, when was the first ever prototype actually being able to load assets dynamically on the browser. So what you see here flashing in red is individual pieces of the geometry being loaded asynchronously. So what you have before is if you wanted to put any 3D geometry on a browser, you would encode it inside the HTML page. The browser would have to read it, process it. The entire interface would freeze for a couple of minutes, and then you would see a geometry. So this was the very, very first system on the planet that could do this. Now, if you rewind forwards, this is what we can do these days. So you can load the entire King's Cross Station, all of the geometry, you don't have to install yeah. anything. There is no more uh, waiting, and you can very easily examine very large 3D models. Now, as I said, this is a showcase, so this is actually visualization model, so there is no uh, engineering data behind it necessarily, but it's the quality and the level of detail you can easily get these days. So before, before I finished as a student, 2014, I established a legal uh, entity, 3D Repo Limited, and we joined an incubation program uh, by Kennedy Wharf Contractors. And they were very interesting because Kennedy Wharf Contractors, they act as a client, but also as the main contractor. And they wanted to cherry pick the best of BIM, even though they don't do public construction. So 2015, we as a company, at the time it was three of us, we won the incubation, we got 50,000 pounds cash, and the opportunity to work on a paid pilot with Kennedy Wharf Contractors. And we've been working with them ever since, and they effectively help us define what the product is these days. So now moving to the present, there is a lot of people who can spin you a 3D model online, but the real question is what can you do next? So what we built is a collaboration platform. It's, it's a platform which is open source, and people and different companies can very easily build their own custom solutions on top of it. So what we do is we collect data throughout the life cycle of the project through various platforms, and then you can very easily process the, the data, visualize it, and display it in any form you want, whether it's online for design coordination purposes, but you want to create custom workflows and um, data analytics, but also in VR. Here is an example of our patent pending technology, which we call 3D diff. And this allows you to identify changes in 3D models visually. So red volume has been deleted and green added. You don't have to install anything. You don't have to do any pre-processing. It's all running on the client in real time. And the beauty of this is that you can compare different file formats. So it doesn't rely on object IDs. You can compare Revit with Tecla, with Archicad, with whatever you want. It couldn't care less. It's purely based on geometry. Now, if we take the same algorithm but run in, in inverse, what we can do is we can actually identify clashes. Now, you might be used to clash visualization where you highlight the entire object, and it's down to the user to figure out where the intersection is. Well, we show you the specific intersection points. So once again, this runs in real time on a client, regardless of the file format. Now, I mentioned custom workflows. So the other thing we can do, here is an example of the UCL Here East project, is once you have a 3D model, let's say simple volumes, using third-party technology like IBM Node-RED, you can very easily create custom workflow and connect various, for instance, IoT devices, but you can also do data analytics. You can create custom dashboards and so on. So in this case, we are connecting WebSockets with live sensor feed directly into 3D model, which you can then go and very easily visualize in real time. And 
basically the sky is the limit. So it's very much up to the users how they want to set up their workflows. What we provide you is ready-made nodes for IBM Node-RED, which is very similar to Dynamo or Grasshopper. Those connect to our APIs and then process the data. So we've shown you where we came from and what we can do now. The real question is where the future is. So we heavily believe in open standards and open formats. And we heavily support IFC and uh, BIM collaboration format, BCF. However, there are certain things that could be done better. I'm sure many of you have used IFC many times before. But if you actually look inside the file format and you start realizing how the computer is in, there are a few shortcomings. So what the computer does, it has to read the file, comes across a line, then it goes and finds a reference, needs to go back, read the reference, then you go find another one, you then read it off, and you keep going, which is extremely inefficient. So what you end up doing is we have one gig of IFC file, which will easily compute, consume 32 gigs of memory on the server, and will take up to two hours to process. That's extremely inefficient. So we got the consortium of various industrial partners and companies um, for a project which we call AEC Deltas. And the idea is that instead of exchanging full IFC files, what we want to exchange is small updates. Whenever you make a design change, you only want to share that. So you don't have to parse the same IFC file over and over again, where 99% of the file have never changed. And the idea is very simple. What we want to do is basically have a data container, which should have a header, which explains where it comes from, what it is. You will have some payload, which would be the geometry and any other information you might want to have there, and ideally cryptographic signature so that you can uh, verify the uh, authenticity, authorship, and so on. And the idea here is very simple. Between two different applications, you can send a stream of these individual small data blocks, and you get the very latest updates. So what we are proposing to deliver is open data specification, open REST API, and also open source implementation. Now, let's imagine you have you know, a open source system, let's say it's called 3D Repo, and you might have another one, let's call it Specworks. Now, you know, you would like these two systems to talk to each other, so what you need to do is create a common REST API, you have common specification that they can talk to each other, and you link them up. So suddenly, the idea is that we will be able to exchange individual data blocks. Then, you can add other applications into the mix, as long as they comply with the same schema, they can be resilient exchange data and you keep adding and adding but the beauty of this is we are not pushing only for open source the idea is that you can also add proprietary and closed source solution into the mix so as long as the specification is open and the data format is open anyone will be able to connect now as a company we also um, release a new website please have a look we are pushing features pretty much every month so adding a lot of functionality there now None of this would have been possible without our great team. And this picture is two weeks old. We are already more people in the company, so we are growing um, very, very quickly. And we are at the Digital Construction Week. Thank you very much. <laughs>